Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here. So it's the time of year when we start thinking about pumpkins. And I have been pondering this for a few days as usual. And I've decided I'm going to paint a little gnome and a pumpkin or two. So I've done a sketch, but what I'm going to do this time, sometimes we do it like this, I'm going to do a pen and ink drawing first, and then I'm going to color it in. Today, I've got my five-year-old hat on and uh, I'm going back to my childhood and we're going to have, I hope, a relaxing day today after yesterday with the funeral and everything of the Queen. Um, so I'm just, I've done the drawing and I'm just going round now with a Stettler pigment liner, size 0.2 this one is, just going round the edges of, uh, sorry, not the colouring, colour, what am I doing? Um, I am going over the pencil lines that I've already done. And I'm just going to draw these in and then we will um, make a painting out of it. So he's got an apple in one hand, there like that, and in this hand he's going to have a flower. So you should be able to see this fairly clearly. Um, if you want to download the sketch, you can get it for free on our uh, website. So there's his nice round bottom and his, his shoes down here. And he's a nice chubby little thing. And I don't know, should I put him in front or behind of the pumpkin? I think we'll just make it up as we go along. So, and we're gonna have some, what should we have here? We can have some grapes because it's still kind of harvest festival time, isn't it? So not fully into winter yet. Put another apple here. A bit later on, we can have some um, really autumn things like pine cones. No, that's winter. Um, what do you uh, Acorns, that's it. We'll have acorns later. Put another pumpkin in here. One of the nice things about pumpkins, apart from the fact that you can make them into pumpkin pie, but these gourds, you can, the shapes vary a lot, don't they? You can have the tall ones and the flat ones and all sorts of different shapes. So we've got a big one over here and uh, our pumpkins or our squash in the garden this year have done really well. Um, don't know why, they looked as if they were all going to die at the beginning, but uh, they didn't. They came through the drought. So we'll just put some lines in for the segments, like that. And there's another one down here. There we are, and that one. After I've done this, I will I'm not going to make those berries, I'm going to make these leaves. I will um, rub out all the lines. And have another pumpkin leaf down here. There we go. And up here, a little boydy perched on the stalk. With his nice this is a whimsical Wednesday one, this one is. So, and then we've got the moon up here. 
Okay, and these lines, I'm going to leave them for the minute because I'll put those in in a whimsical way at the end. So there we are, that's our basic design. And um, he probably, his beard wants to, I don't know, I don't want to touch that because it'll probably go wrong. Um, make a nice little card if you did it the right shape, right size and everything. So we'll stop there, there it is. And I'll uh, come back in a second with a paintbrush and we'll do the next step. I decided on a sort of subtle colour palette for this one. So I'm not going to come in with some screaming oranges or anything like that. Have you ever seen a screaming orange? But I'm going to do this in a fairly subtle kind of way. Um, and um, we'll just get rid of some of the lines. So we'll use um, some soft greens and some soft orangey, ambery type of colours with a few stronger colours just for emphasis in a few places to give it a little bit more punctuation. So let me just get that off. There. Right. Okay. Um, small brush because Oops, small painting. I've got a five, a three, a seven, I think. I think maybe we will go for the, what's this? That's a seven. Don't think I've used that one before. Everything I'm doing here in this video is on the kitchen table because I'm on holiday for a week or two and I don't have my normal things around me. So we're having to compromise, improvise, improvise, improvise. I'll start with the hat. Let's um, come into the hat with some sort of orangey colour. And the thing to do is remember that you're not actually really um, five years old and painting like a kiddie. So you can keep inside the lines if you want. And you can come in with a darker reddish colour to give him some stripes on his hat. I'm using um, A Gallo paints today because those are the ones I brought away with me on holiday, but you could use anything and the colours are completely and utterly not important. Choose whatever you feel like, but this is a burnt sienna colour, this brown, and underneath it we've got a kind of cadmium orange. So that's his hat. And he's sitting, he's got a, a little robe on and then he's obviously sort of more or less pumpkin coloured down here. So we're just doing him in sort of light ambery shade. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make this pumpkin blue. I've seen quite a lot painted blue on the internet. I personally don't see pumpkins in a blue very often, but I think they look quite nice. So we'll do that. And then the one at the back here is going to be kind of beige, I think. Don't want it too gingery. Yeah, something like that will do. And keep it sort of fairly, um, what's the word? Harmonious colours, not too, not too harsh or too bright, but with just a little bit of variation in there. And then the one in the front is going to be on the green side. So this is a deep sea green or something. If you have this set, you'll find a lot of ready mixed greens in it. But if you don't have this one, I mean, you could make this colour using Windsor Green and a little bit of, a little bit more blue. And then we want a really dark green, don't we, for the um, stalks. So we've got this, um, this dark sort of phthalo green and we just add some yellow a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we pop in a stalk or two. 
or three, like that. <clears throat> and then, <coughs> excuse me, we will need to vary our greens a little bit here and there. Give us these leaves. And chances are, because um, I started <clears throat> with my lines in um, first, <clears throat> my lines went in first, that means that I'll probably have to come back with more lines, more outlines, because they'll kind of get covered up quite a bit. So there's a nice red apple, another one down here. Now I was going to make that little pile of nuts down there, but I, uh, sorry, of grapes, but I think I'm going to change it to something else because I don't know quite what. There's something not quite right about that. I'm having to put purple down there, so I don't want to do that. Too many colours. I'm going to give him some red boots. And maybe, maybe he should have a little red nose. And of course, pink cheeks. And his hand will be pinkish. Can't really see his hand on this one. I'll just pretend. Put that in with the flowers. And a nice flower there. A few more leaves over here. And then the bird, make the bird blue, I think. Should I make the bird blue? Should I make the bird green? Green bird. Yeah, and then, of course, the moon will have to be yellow. I suppose it could be blue. And, um... Some pale, very pale blue for his beard. Yeah, okay. Now the rest of it is going to be done with pen. Oh, I probably should put some some nice dark sky behind him. I'm not going to fill it all in, just, just a bit of an indication. You can do it however you want. It's obviously night time because the moon's out. It could be a blue sky if you make it light. Daytime, the moon comes out during the day too, doesn't it? Not quite sure why the moon's there in any case, but there we are. It is. him on a little bit of ground. I might put some more leaves in underneath there in a minute. just darken up these shadows on these pumpkins. And I don't think I don't think it's the right colour now. It's gone a bit brownish.
Let me let that dry for a minute. This is dry now and I can get on with the, what I think is probably the funnest bit of this kind of drawing and that is of course the embellishment. So I've got here um, my Stettler fine liners again in different sizes. I've got a, um, a gold uni ball Sigma, Sigma Signo pen and a white one and a bronze one. And I've also got a new acquisition, a Posca pen. Haven't uh, had this before. This is what they call super fine or something like that. It's 0 0.7 um, point and it actually gives quite a fine line, not too bad. And that's really useful for when you want something to really stand out in white and it even covers up the odd mistake as well. So that's a good thing. So we've done quite a lot of whimsical drawings lately or paintings with whimsy on top. So um, let's get started because this is the fun bit. Okay, so um, I think what I'll do just actually before we get started completely, I'm going to put a little bit more paint on the bird. I'm going to give him a nice colourful tail and perhaps, perhaps a wing in greeny blue. I think I've woken up now. I was a bit sleepy when I started this. I, uh, let me put some blue on his there and some blue there, make him coordinated. And um, yeah, so the rest I think I'll leave as it is and see what we can make of it. So let's, uh, let's try out the Posca pen. Let us play with it. Give it a good check. And if you're not sure what you're going to do, it's always a good idea to grab your sketch or trial and try and get the pen to work. That's always a good start. Well, that's not going to be very bright. I don't know, it seemed to be brighter before. Anyway, so let's go around this pumpkin. Just to start and we'll go give it some nice light shape there. That's working okay, isn't it? Maybe we'll do the same on this one. A little bit of a highlight on the apple, perhaps. Hmm, okay. I don't know if I prefer that one or this one. Let's see. The thing with this white pen is that you have to press very lightly, so it's completely different from a Posca, which you can press, I think, more firmly. Okay. Okay, that's nice and delicate. So, yeah, I think I'm going to use the Posca because I think it shows up better. So, yeah. Okay. And for the curly bits up here, we will do something like that. And here to maybe another small one over there. Perhaps we'll go around the outside with black a little bit. I'm going to do a little pile of hearts down there and we'll make them golden. Okay. 
and let's try this bronze because bronze is a good colour, isn't it, for autumn. So let's strengthen these stripes on our little gnome on his hat. And there's a bit of pattern there. Okay, so go around these leaves. And then uh, let's go back to the white and Just put some patterns on. It's a bit scritchy, isn't it? I should think if you were a bit sensitive to sound, you might find that a bit scritchy. You know, sort of fingernails on the blackboard kind of scritchy. So I hope nobody gets upset by that. I haven't, like I say, used this one before. shine on his feet, on his shoes. Mm, maybe we put gold on this one. Fill those in. And then I'm going to put some stars and things in the sky. But we're not going to use that. Let's do it in silver, gold rather. As you work with these materials, you discover there are limitations and sometimes you just have to improvise. So we'll put some nice gold stars around and then we'll come back to this little birdie and um, let's outline his wing, put a bit of gold on his tail. I'm just going to just put a little bit of shadow on our gnome's beard and uh, keep that nice and light. We don't want him having a blue beard, do we? And then the bird, I think, I'm um, just going to improve the shape a little bit of uh, the birdie -o. Just bring that down, make that a little bit bigger. And then I think we're probably pretty much done. I'm going to call that a day. And uh, oh, hang on a minute, there was just one other thing I wanted to put right this flower down here. And you could add lots of other bits and pieces and make this a little bit darker, perhaps.
I think if I was to do this again, I'd do it a bit bigger. So I wasn't uh, uh, cramping my style, so to speak. And um, this one here, this leaf needs a nice white pattern of veins. And um, yeah, I think. more variety in the colour here and maybe here too. I'm tempted to change the colour of the gnome's robes but uh, I'm not quite sure what to really. Um, don't really want him to conflict too much. I mean should he be in a a brighter red, perhaps. I'll try it out on my other thing. Maybe. Maybe he'd be better in red. Although he might look like Father Christmas then, mightn't he? Let's compromise and make him spotty. And on his sleeves. I'll do it the other way around. Done then. Oh no, hang on. Right, now we're done. One gnome and three pumpkins and a little bird and the moon. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make it yours. Have a go. See what you can do. And uh, I'll see you again soon. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.